Um, um, the first one is saying the Constitution, hold on, the Constitutional Convention of 1787 had no need to invent a new form of government. All it did was codify the imperial and provincial systems under which America had been ruled, minus the formal subservience to Great Britain. To what extent do you agree or disagree? What this is saying essentially is that when after we got the Constitution, it was pretty much like this this question is saying. After we got the Constitution, it was pretty much exactly like we were under Britain. Only, instead of saying, we served a king, now we served a powerful you know, president and federal government. That really nothing changed. The people who were in charge then are basically in charge now. We had a strong central government then, we have a strong central government now. This is not talking about the Articles, it's talking about the Constitution and how it essentially just made this powerful. I've seen one or two people try to compare this to the Articles. This has nothing to do with the Articles. It's Constitution versus Britain. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, Michaela, I think you're next um, to the table. How do you recommend we organize number two? Like, can we do a group and then one and then a group? Or like, how would you want us to separate them? Yeah, I, I don't, i tell you what, I was, um, we talked about this in, in first block yesterday. Um, Brett did an interesting thing, and you can see if you like what he did, and I'll tell you what my criticisms of that were. First of all, I'll say, as long as it's organized rationally that you can get evidence out of, that's fine. There isn't one way to organize an essay, okay? Um, I, I'm not like, oh, they didn't do this. Point off, right? As long as you're organizing and answering the question, and you're providing evidence and analysis and organizing. That's what I'm looking for. I just want to say that just in general for all the essays. Okay? But what Brett did on this one, he looked at three main specific economic acts of parliament that were representative of bigger ideas. Right? Um, obviously, what's the biggest act of parliament that you're going to basically have to talk a lot about? Stamp Act, right? And he looked at the Stamp Act because within that, there's the external versus the internal debate. The you know not not really democratic debate, um, the stand back Congress part of it, um, the Sons of Liberty part of it, the non importation part of it, and how all of that was leading to America forming this revolutionary fervor. Then he looked at the Townsend Acts because essentially what that did was make it look like okay well before with the stamp back it was okay we like taxes we don't like taxes if they're external right but the stamp back was internal but what was the Townsend Act? It was external right so now America is rejecting taxes in general since we have no representation and because of that we get things like letter from a Pennsylvania farmer um, and we get um, more non-importation we get um, the um, Massachusetts circular letter, right? We get um, um, a sense of liberty coming back again. And then his last one was the Tea Act. Because what the Tea Act did was it forced the Boston Tea Party, it wasn't forced it, but it happened because of it. Um, it wasn't like the tea, party. the tea Act happened. We must throw some tea in the water. Um, so it leads to the Boston Tea Party, which leads to the Coercive Acts, right? The Quartering Act. And then really getting America mad, and that leads to the Boston Massacre and all these things, and that's how he did it. So each one of those acts was sort of representative of a larger theme, and he talked about those themes within each paragraph. Does that make sense? Now, when I mentioned a criticism, I think that was really smart, but what would you think would be problematic in doing it that way? Yeah, I mean, so you can bring up, like with the like with the Tea Act, you can obviously bring up the Coercive Acts and the Quartering Act and things like that. And with Stamp Act, you can bring up the fact that there were all kind of arguments with that. But you have to focus on those three acts. Yeah, and you're also missing out on things like the Navigation Laws, the Molasses Act, the Triangle Trade, because there were other things that were a long time before the Revolution happened that led up to Americans really focusing on their own economics as an important part, right? With solitary neglect and all these things, right? So... That might be something, or maybe you have four, where you have, I've seen people do sort of a time thing, right? Like a, like a pre... Like I split mine up by the Stamp Act Congress, like anything behind it to the Stamp Act Congress, 
and the second month is anything from there up to the first Continental Congress, and then the third one is the second Continental Congress. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, and there, um, um. your paragraphs are going to be wholesale unbalanced, though, right? I mean, your first two paragraphs are going to be mammoth. A bit longer than that. Yeah, and that, and that's okay. That's I'm going to stick in more analysis in mind. Yeah, and if there's no rule. It's not in the, you know, the, the 11th commandment is that thou shalt have even paragraphs, right? Yeah, that's... I rely a lot on Corey Center and DJ D P H D. Very educated. Who's that? Oh, it's my wife, all right. Hello? Hey. Yeah, where is it? It's that button. What button? Oh, 